Battle of Home Delivery, or the winner of the Corona. Let's talk about that. Home delivery has been popular and growing in South America for the past oh, nine years. Or so. It's a surge in demand, about 30% during this quarantine. It's time to look at the services available here in Colombia, and most of this will also apply to Ecuador. Okay, I'm going to talk about the four big home services. First of all, you have Delivery Hero. Now, it gets a little complicated. They're worldwide, and they were founded in 2011 by Nicholas Olstberg. Now, that's in Germany. Delivery Hero and its acquisitions are the largest food delivery in the world outside of China. Now, in Colombia, there was a small homegrown version called Domicilio, but their parent company, Delivery Hero. Domicilio is a name that it operates under. They're very well run with a great app. Next one on the list is iFood. Now, you may have seen that. This began in 2011 in Brazil, part of another company. They bought up the Colombian, another Colombian homegrown product called Comeja. Locations for iFood are Argentina, Peru, Chile, Colombia, France, Mexico, and the USA. Their claim to fame and much of their focus has been on business catering. Basically, they do monthly contracts with businesses, and this is how they got so big in Brazil. The selling point is they get to keep the employees in, so they're more productive. And they sell the products that you, you sign up, you say, okay, I want a coffee break at 9.30 in the morning, lunchtime at 1 o'clock, I want you to come in and serve lunch. Number three on this list is Uber Eats. Now, most of you are probably familiar with that simply because the company's base company is Uber. Now, they were a little late to the game. They started in the USA and California. They started in 2014 under the name Uber Fresh. Of course, they realized that name was kind of a mistake because nobody knew fresh what. And so they changed it to Uber Eats in 2015. In 2016, they went international, and their first place international was in London, England. In November of 2016, they came here to Colombia. In 2018, they did a big change. They'd had a fixed rate structure. In most places, it was $4.99 in dollars. And they changed it up to charging whatever the distance is. So if you're close to wherever that restaurant is, it would be a lower charge. Further away, it would be a greater charge. It may not seem like much, but it was a huge change in their model. Today, they're found in 24 different countries, of course, including Ecuador and Colombia. Now, a question will come up. I, I read somewhere that Uber was expelled from Colombia, and that's true. The Uber drivers cannot be here, cannot work. However, Uber Eats did not apply to that. So Uber Eats is here alive and well. Now, the last one on this list is Rappi, R-A-P-P-I. They're a 100% Colombian company. They're also located in Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Mexico, Peru, Uruguay. They're founded in 2015. Their business model was this. Order anything and in 30 minutes or less we'll deliver it for a dollar. While the others are really a restaurant-based food delivery business, Rappi wanted to be, we'll deliver anything. You just call us up to tell, tell us what you want. We'll go get it, and we'll bring it to you, and we'll charge you a dollar for that service. Currently, for every transaction that takes place, they earn about 17% of that transaction. No, they're not charging 17% delivery rate. I'm going to do an entire video on this company because it deserves it far more than home deliveries. They'll even do ATM. They'll bring you the money. In 2019, SoftBank invested $1 billion in Rappi. Later in 2019, they were awarded Business of the Year. And the reason they were awarded it? For transforming society. And in 2019, last year was a busy year for them, they partnered with Visa. Now, that means they can do prepaid cards. I've got one being delivered in the next day or two. 
You can also do the QR code and you can check out with your digital wallet. You can use your cell phone at any market, scan the QR code and just do an automatic payment. They do groceries, they do pharmacy, do the liquor store, all kinds of things. What's the bottom line? Well, during this quarantine, they're all winners. Well, everybody's out struggling. These home delivery companies are booming, as you can imagine. They're an exception to any of these quarantines. They, they are required to do certain precautions, and when they come to my building, for example, they can't come into the building, so I have to go down and meet them at the, at the entrance. But they've been a lifesaver. So even without this quarantine, if you're coming to visit, or if you're coming to live here, or if you're going to Ecuador, I highly recommend that you download these four apps. Find out the one that works best for you. Every app doesn't have all the same restaurants, although mostly they do. But some apps will have this restaurant and these others don't. So I basically use for restaurants, there's two apps I'll use, iFood and Domicilio. Uh, they, I used to use Uber Eats, but the reason I would use them was a particular restaurant. They dropped out of Uber Eats. They're, they're just doing their own, and and so I, I don't I don't really use them anymore. Plus, I had a few problems with their website, where Domicilio and iFoods have been pretty flawless. Of course, now with Rappi, they don't have so many restaurants in there, but they have everything else. So I've used them in the last three days. I've used them five different times for different things. So these home delivery services for restaurants are awesome. This movement by Rappi to include other things is awesome. Now, I've mentioned before that most everything that you can buy, you can get delivered in the home. However, it's a little problematic depending on uh, how good your Spanish is. You, you have to do it on the phone. There's maybe not a, a, an app to order it off of or maybe not a website to order off it. Maybe they're confused about what you said and it, it can be a little problematic. Although I've gotten a bunch of things that way. These apps make it pretty seamless. There's really rarely any kind of communication. It's a convenience you can't beat and for the one, two, three dollars cost to have somebody bring things to your house you know you, you might if you take a taxi there and back or you take a bus and the time and back you're going to spend that much or more anyway so that's it these are the apps that you want to have this is why and the bright side during this quarantine is they're doing really well and they're providing a great service so i'll see you in the next video no they don't pick your card up and go it, I'll do the video on that.